In this video, we're going to talk about Kepler's third law. And the gist of his third law is that the ratio of the squares of the periods of any two planets revolving around the sun is equal to the ratio of the cubes of their mean distances from the sun. So the ratio of the periods, t1 over t2, and that is the square of those periods, is equivalent to the cube of their mean distances. So that's r1 over r2 raised to the third power. So this equation is associated with Kepler's third law. Now let's talk about how to derive that equation. So let's say this is the sun and here's the earth. The earth orbits the sun. So therefore the gravity provides the centripetal force. So we're going to set the gravitational force equal to the centripetal force. So the gravitational force is the gravitational constant g times the mass of the sun times the mass of the earth divided by the square distance between their centers. The centripetal force acting on the earth is going to be the mass of the earth times v squared over r. So we can cancel m, and we can cancel 1r on both sides. So we have gm over r is equal to v squared. Now, the Earth is moving with constant speed around the sun. So we can use the equation d is equal to vt. v is the distance divided by the time. And the Earth is traveling in a nearly circular orbit. So the distance around a circle is 2 pi r. The time it takes to revolve around that circle is the period. So therefore, we can replace v squared with 2 pi r over t squared. So now I need to make some more space. So what we now have is g times the mass of the sun over r is equal to, if we square both sides, or not both sides, but just this side, 2 squared is 4, and then we're going to have pi squared times r squared over t squared. Now let's cross multiply. So on the left, we're going to have g times ms times t squared is equal to 4 pi squared times r cubed. Now, save this portion of the equation in this form. We're going to use it later in this video, so just make a note of it. Now, I'm going to solve for t squared. So I need to divide both sides by gm. So t squared is 4 pi squared r cubed over g times m. Now, what I'm going to do is divide t2 squared by t1 squared. So t2 is going to be 4 pi squared r2 raised to the third over gms. Based on this equation, t1 squared is going to be 4 pi squared r1 cube over gms. So g and the mass of the sun is going to be the same, so we can cancel it. And 4 pi squared is going to be the same. So we're left with t2 squared over t1 squared, and that's equal to r2 cubed over r1 cubed, which if we want to, we can write it as t2 over t1 raised to the second power equals r2 over r1 raised to the third power. So that's how you can derive the equation that's associated with Kepler's third law. Now let's work on a few practice problems. The mean distance between the Earth and the Sun is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. The mean distance between the Sun and Mars is 2.287 times 10 to the 11 meters. What is the period of Mars around the Sun in Earth days? So let's say this is the Sun. 
here's the Earth, and here's Mars. So let's say this is the orbit for Earth, and this is the orbit for Mars. Now, it takes Earth 365 days to orbit the Sun. And it takes Mars some unknown number of days to orbit it. So let's say if this is T1, we need to find T2. That's the time it takes for Mars to orbit the Sun. Now we have the mean distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the Sun. That's about 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters. So if T1 corresponds to Earth, R1 has to be the distance between the Sun and the Earth. Now the distance between the Sun and Mars, that's given to us, that's 2.287 times 10 to 11. So we're going to define that as R2. Our goal is to calculate T2. So T2 over T1 squared is equal to R2 over R1 cubed. Or, if you want to, you could write it this way. It might be easier to do it like this. T2 squared over T1 squared is equal to R1 cubed with R2 cubed on top. So let's say that T1 corresponds to the Earth. So it's 365 days squared. And we're looking for T2. R1 is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th. And let's raise that to the third power. R2 is 2.287 times 10 to 11 to the third power. So let's cross multiply first. So on the left I'm going to have 365 squared times 2.287 times 10 to 11 raised to the third power. And on the right it's going to be 1.5 times 10 to 11 raised to the third power times t2 squared. Now I'm going to divide both sides by this number. So I'm no longer going to have it on the right side. But it's going to be on the bottom of the left side. So now let's type this in to calculate T2 squared. So 472,183.1, that's equal to T2 squared. So now we need to take the square root of both sides. So T2 is about 687 days. So that's how long it takes Mars to orbit the Sun. So one year on Mars is 687 days. That's a long time. One year on the Earth is 365 days. A year is defined as the time it takes for a planet to orbit the Sun. Now let's move on to the next problem. It takes Venus 225 days to orbit the Sun. If the Earth-Sun distance is 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters, what is the mean distance between Venus and the Sun? So if you want to draw a picture, let's say this is the Sun. And here is the Earth, and let's say here's Venus. So this is the orbit for Venus, and this is the orbit for the Earth. So it takes Venus 225 days, because it's close to the Sun. For the Earth, it's 365 days. We know the distance between the Sun and the Earth. It's 1.5 times 10 to the 11th we need to find the distance between Venus and the Sun. So let's call it R2. 
that's the missing variable that we're looking for. So using the same equation, t2 over t1 squared is equal to r2 over r1 cubed. So t1, we're going to apply it for Earth. That's going to be 365 days. And t2, that's going to correspond for the period for Venus, which is 225 Earth days. r1 is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 raised to the third power. So we're looking for r2 in this problem. So just like before, we're going to cross multiply. So it's going to be 365 squared times r2 cubed, and that's equal to 225 squared times 1.5 times 10 to 11 raised to the third power. So I'm going to divide both sides by 365 squared. So r2 raised to the third power is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 11 raised to the third power times 225 squared divided by 365 squared. So you should get 1.282 times 10 to the 33. Now to get r, raise both sides to the 1 third power. So r2 is the cube root of that number. which is 1.086 times 10 to the 11 meters. So as you can see, it's less than the Earth-Sun distance because Venus is closer to the Sun. And so it's going to have a smaller period. Number three, calculate the mass of the Sun using the Earth-Sun mean distance of 1.5 times 10 to 11. Now earlier in this video I mentioned to highlight this equation which we derived already. g times ms t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed. So we derived this equation where the Sun was at the center and the Earth was orbiting the Sun. We sent the centripetal force equal to the gravitational force. And we also replace the velocity with 2 pi r over t. And we were able to get this equation. Now all we got to do from that point is solve for m. That's going to give us the mass of the sun. So to do that, we need to divide both sides by gt squared. So the mass of the sun can be calculated using this equation. It's 4 pi squared times r raised to the third power divided by gt squared. So if you need to find the mass of any planet or the mass of the sun, you can use this formula. Where t is the time it takes for an object to orbit the sun or that planet. So let's say if you want to find the mass of the earth you want to use the period of the moon because you need a satellite that's orbiting it. If you want to find the mass of the sun, the Earth is acting like a satellite because the Earth is orbiting the sun. So you would have to use the period of the Earth. But if you want to find the mass of the Earth, use the period of the moon for t. So let's go ahead and plug everything we have. So r is the distance between the Earth and the sun. That's 1.5 times 10 to the 11th raised to the third power. And g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And t is the period in seconds. Now, it takes about one year for the Earth to travel around the sun. So that's about 365 days. Now, if you want to incorporate the leap year and say 365.25 days, that's fine too, but the answer is not going to change much. It's going to be about the same. Each day contains 24 hours, and each hour is 60 minutes, 
and one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So we can cancel the unit days, hours, and minutes. So it's 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. So it takes the Earth 31,536,000 seconds to orbit the Sun. And don't forget to square that number. So you should get 2.01 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. So that's the mass of the sun. So let's say if you want to calculate the mass of the earth using that same formula. Now, in order to calculate the mass of the Earth, the Earth has to be the object in the center. So we need something that's orbiting the Earth. In this case, we're going to use the Moon. So we need two things. The Earth-Moon distance, which you can look it up. That's about 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. And you need the period of the Moon. It takes the moon about 27.4 days to orbit the Earth. Now we need to convert that value to seconds. So T is 27.4 days. And one day is equivalent to 24 hours. One hour is 60 minutes. And each minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So it's 27.4 times 24 times 60 times 60. So the period is 2,367,360 seconds. So that's how long it takes the moon to orbit the Earth. So now we can plug in everything. So it's 4 pi squared times 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters raised to the third power divided by the gravitational constant multiplied by 2367360 squared. So go ahead and type this in. So you should get about 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, which is the mass of the Earth.